Yep. Uh, we're back with VR block. Final part of VR block, MGS2 VR missions. Uh, this time, it's going to be Ed's first time on the channel. Uh, so everyone, wish him good luck. Um, unlike VR1 and VR and Ghost Babble VR, we're not going to be going through all the levels unless you guys want to be here for the next seven hours because VR2 has 500 missions. Instead, we're going to be doing the most popular levels, which are sneaking for all six characters. So I'm going to count down Ed in backstage, and he can go. And he should be off. So Ed's going to be starting backwards. He's going to be starting with MGS1 Snake and then uh, going backwards progressively all the way until he gets to ride him. Um, so the reason he does this is because um, MGS1 Snake is notorious for being very trolly. It's by far the hardest levels to do um, compared to the other characters. Um, got anything to say, Makarov? Uh, yeah, I want to wish uh, Edboy some uh, good luck, and uh, I just uh, think that this would be a great run. A lot of interesting strats in this run, and uh, yeah, it will definitely there? be enjoyable. Yep. Uh, as with um, what we saw with um, VR1 and Ghost Battle VR, there's a lot of IL strats that you're just not going to see it. Especially with the higher characters like MGS1, Snake, and whatnot, just because they're ridiculously difficult to pull off, especially in an RTA setting. So you can see Ed there did a punch buffer. Usually in the IL strat, we wouldn't even do that sort of punch buffer. We'd, we'd keep the buffer as little as possible, but that's just for safety here. Um, keep in mind the level designs. As we go through the different characters, you're going to notice that the levels repeat in terms of how they look, the layout. Uh, the main difference is going to be amounts of guards, um, guard positions, and uh, guard difficulties. On MGS1 Snake, the guard difficulty is practically European Extreme in terms of their vision. Um, is there somebody there? Yeah, here's something you'd see in the IL strat, actually. In uh, MGS1 stake, most of the guards hear basically anything around the map and they have a lot of range when it comes to sight and you really need to be careful when you're taking corners and when you're stepping on uh, those uh, platforms over there that uh, give you footprints or that make a lot of noise. So here's a level that um, me, Limes and others highly recommend for any MGS2 runner. Very nice. You want to practice movement in this game? This is the level for you. Even if you're not a VR runner, a full game runner, practice this level. You'll get really good with Snake's movement. So here's an example of the IL strat that I said that you're not going to see. You actually see a, a silent shot in the IL strat for this, um, where you basically pause the moment you shoot an unsuppressed weapon and it just cancels the noise. That's a frame-perfect trick. You're never going to see it in an RTA run. It's too risky to go for. Yeah, for especially for VR, most... Uh, oh, that was bad. Yeah. That's a clever backup. Knowing when it, the strat isn't going to work, it's better to restart than to take a continue and sit there in the mission fail screen. For uh, VR full game runs and the uh, category runs like this one, you're aiming strictly for consistency. That's the most important part because a lot of VR missions are really difficult and it's important to be consistent than to get the highest score. Nothing here. This level is beyond insane. There's many guards, there's cameras. You can see Ed is playing it as safe as possible. It is a really difficult level. Nice. Very nice. Getting through all MGS1 snake levels without a continuing, that's very good. And now we're on to Tuxedo Snake. Yep. Tuxedo Snake, basically the James Bond of this game. It's just solid snake wearing a tuxedo and carrying out carrying around a tranquilizer gun. 
Yeah, that's a very good thing about uh, Tuxedo Snake is the M9. It really helps with a lot of missions. Underwater smoking with a hundred bits. Thank you very much, underwater smoking. Freeze. Oh. Hold up strap there. That guard would turn around and see you, but holding him up puts him in, it puts him in his position. Another thing that is used to buffer guard movement is uh, shooting them. If you shoot them, uh, they will pause for a second, like uh, you saw right there. Yep. Uh, at the end of every level, you're noticing that you can hear Snake's voice say "damn." That's because Ed isn't beating the top three scores. But the top three scores using the save we made is just impossible to beat. It's just full nines, and we do that intentionally because it saves a few seconds every level. Is there somebody there? That was another uh, example of good awareness. He saw that uh, the guards weren't in the correct spot and uh, took a restart. Freeze. Another thing that you saw there is that if you shoot a guard with a tranquilizer gun and then roll into him, he will instantly be knocked out. Yeah, fancy mechanic, just rolling into a guard after tranking them that got carried over to all the other Metal Gear games as well. Three, four, probably Phantom Pain, I have no idea. <laughs> Really nice double hold up. Not only the double hold up, but if you noticed, he buffered his knock. Because the, the right guard doesn't hear the knock, but the left one does. And he buffered it just so that those two guards can be in the same position when he holds them up. There you saw another buffer. Damn. The camera's too slow to spot him, gets into the goal before the alert goes off. You will see that quite a lot in uh, all sneaking 9 uh, levels. Nice. So now we're done with Tuxedo Snake and we're moving on to Priskin. <gasps> so one of the useful things about Pliskin is um, he has a suppressed Lethal weapon, USB. Um, it's really easy to do distraction shots with suppressed lethal weapons. Just shoot the wall anywhere in the anywhere that's relatively close to the guard, and they'll look in that direction. Whereas with the M9 with Tuxedo Snake, it's kind of trickier. It has to be a lot closer to the guard. Damn. 
it's basically the opposite of the M9. The M9 is non-lethal but bad for distractions, whilst uh, the USP is good for distracting guards, but uh, it's lethal. Oh, the auto-aim kind of messed them up there. Smart to recognize that. Just take the restart instead of taking the continue. So uh, Ed uh, knocked on uh, the rail and uh, both of the guards hurt him and uh, now he has a clear way to the goal. Now uh, for uh, sneaking uh, 6 you can see another distraction shot and uh, yeah, very clean. Another thing is that uh, if you walk over corpses, you move slower, so you always want to cartwheel, roll over, or just avoid corpses completely. Freeze. Oh, that is unfortunate. Uh, he missed yeah. the roll, and if you hold up a guard, walk away slightly far away from them, and they see that, they're gonna alert, and it's sneaking level. The case for sneaking level is you get an alert, it's an instant game over. There you go. Caught it this yeah, time. That was a bit more safer. Freeze. As you can see, distraction shots with the USB, especially if it suppresses, is a lot easier. Dragging that guard closer to you so that you can just. Headshot him. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Um, unfortunate. That is a tricky strap to pull off. You basically want to roll into the guard at a specific angle where the other guard isn't looking in your direction, but he looks kind of southwest. Alright, he's close to being done with the Bliskin levels now. There you go. Nicely done. So two more snake characters and two more riding characters. Next up is regular snake. Oh, sorry, did I say two more snake characters? I meant one more snake character, my bad. Uh, yeah, apparently <laughs> there is another snake. <laughs> MGS2 snake. <laughs> Sneaking three, that's a level where um, you can actually see the hardware differences uh, in terms of the strats. Um, if you play that level on 50 Hz, you can actually do a completely different strat that saves a lot There's more time. There. 
But since this is a PC port, we're playing on 60 hertz. We have to stick to the traditional strap. Ooh, that's a risky strap that he went for. Smart enough to recognize that he needs to restart and not continue. Ed had a very bad angle on that one. Oh, that is unfortunate. Yeah, that's another restart for sure. That's actually clever. Wait for the guards to look down and go. Nice back up. Poor guard. Did nothing and then just falls to his death. I guess while well, Snake it was Snake, while well, Ed is completing the Snake levels, um, probably just uh, spend some time ask, thanking everyone for all the subs and donations they've made to do. Um, this is the marathon that we made to celebrate us going uh, affiliate on the channel, and it's been amazing seeing everyone donate and sub today. I think we're up over a hundred today. Ridiculous the amount of numbers we've made. And it's not over yet. Um, this is only day one. Tomorrow, uh, day two, we have um, the relay race. And then on day three, um, we have continuation of this marathon with uh, even more Metal Gear and non Metal Gear runs. Ooh, that was kind of risky. Smart work using the box just so the guard doesn't investigate, goes the other side. Yeah, boxes are pretty OP in Metal Gear games. So on these sneaking 10 levels, if you notice, a lot of the characters have magazines, and most of the IL strats uh, use those magazines for distractions. But outside an IL setting, I would never recommend you touching the magazine of this game. It's garbage. Don't use it. <laughs> Even if the other strat is a million times slower, go for that. Don't use magazines. And now we're on to the best set of missions, x Raiden. Yep. x Raiden, Naked Raiden. Teaching right in. <laughs> this is pretty much one level which is made up of five levels. Yeah, if you watch the MGS1 VR run uh, by Limes earlier, there was a level called VR Mission where you play 10 consecutive levels. This is kind of similar where you play five consecutive levels. But in this uh, in this in this type of level, you actually don't have access to any weapons. So it, while it can be a little bit easier um, because there's less levels, there's, it's also a little bit harder because um, you have access to no weapons. That's it, Fancy cart heel over the stairs there as the guard turns around. And that's the only level for x riding just one. And now, a character that I really hate, Ninja Raiden. Ninja Raiden has a sword, and uh, we don't really use it. Yeah, the sword is kind of garbage in this game. 
Um, it's unlike MGS1 VR where they actually built proper sword mechanics and proper ninja mechanics for three VR levels. In this game, there. there's a bunch of Ninja Raiden levels and a bunch of HF Blade levels, but it's just oh. basic MGS2 mechanics. It doesn't that's, feel like there's anything special to it. That's a shame. Ooh, that was unfortunate. Guard like saw him like, the corner of his eye. So uh, Ninja Raiden is, is uh, based on the extreme difficulty and the guards have uh, very good uh, hearing and, uh, vis and uh, sight. So there you saw a trick, if you unequip the HF blade whilst you're just standing still, you will get a long animation, but if you go up against a wall, you will unequip it instantly without any animation. Yeah, that allows him to throw the guard, otherwise he wouldn't be able to with the blade equipped. What does HF stand for? Uh, high frequency. Clever knocking strap, just attract all three guards away, just get rid of them, just clear the path. That was a bad Kaufman. Ooh, that was scary. Ooh, he got away with it. He saw him walking over the noisy floor at first, just to avoid that guard spotting him. Is there somebody now there? I will do some parkour if you like it. Yeah. Here's the fancy riding strap that I like so much. How bad? You will see the same strat for a regular right as well. Yeah, I guess the high frequency, the high frequency it vibrates really fast. Basically, maybe that's probably why it's called like that. I don't know why they didn't just give it a regular name like sword or katana or something like that. They had to be fancy and call it high frequency. So there's actually a mechanic in this game where there? if you swipe the blade and hold it, um, hold the right analog stick down whatever direction you swiped, you can actually skip the animation with these stairs. Uh, that's the IL strat. Um, Ed chose not to do it because he didn't want to go too fast and give him give himself a really difficult guard cycle. So that's uh, what, he, what he just did there in Sneaking 9 is what he tried to do in Pliskin. Cart wheeling or rolling into that guard at a specific angle, a specific moment, makes the other guard turn not in your direction, but southwest towards where the guard faced, and that just clears the path for you to go through. I've always found it easier with Raiden. Yeah, it is easier with Raiden, isn't it? I don't know why, even though like their movement for both characters are literally the same. Well, it has to do with uh, the cartoons. <laughs> All right, one more character go one more character to go, 10 levels. They're going to be identical to Ninja Raiden to a certain degree. Some levels are going to be different based on guard positions and whatnot. Somebody there. Oh, he missed the goal. That's unfortunate. The goal's hit the goal's hitbox in this game can be a bit awkward, but it got a nice score of triple sixes.
there you go, similar to the Ninja Raiden strat where you just throw the guard to clear your path. But this time he didn't have to unequip the HF blade. The IL for this mission has a very hard trick to do, a silent cartwheel. Where you cartwheel into the guard that you throw, in this case, and uh, yeah, it's really hard to do it, so, precise line. It's basically, in this game, there's this mechanic where if you pause at a specific moment where you did an action that would cause a guard to be distracted, but you pause on that specific frame, it cancels the sound of them being, uh, the, the sound that it would create. And it would cause other guards to not be distracted by it. Is there somebody it's there? really the mechanic behind silent anything, silent shots, silent card feel. Damn it! That was a bit scary. Just slightly holding the analog stick to get the walking animation instead of the running one. So here's one of my there? favorite levels from sneaking. Just parkour your way through. Similar that, to what he did in Ninja Rider. That was nice. Yep. Just wait for that guard to go. This guard is going to turn around as you approach. And... Nice card field, that's the level. So with a lot of these VR levels, um, I'm sure people have noticed, it's all about guard cycles. Sometimes you can't go too fast, otherwise you just won't get a favorable guard cycle. Sometimes you want to go really fast to get that guard cycle that you want. So I think he went the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> I think he went the IL route for a second. Ooh. That's really unfortunate. Is this a first continue? I think. Or a second, might I believe. Be second there. one. Second, yeah. Freeze. Yeah. Oh. Uh. He should play it safe and trank that guard. Because that is kind of risky. Um. Going upstairs there while that card is being held up. You'd have to take a very tight angle. There you go, you got it. Very nice. Yeah, just some unfortunate twist starts and continues. Now we can probably notice there you go that. Again. Uh, Snake and Nani is basically the same for every character except the MG Swan Snake. And the final level in the game. For sneaking missions at least. Yep, this is the final level, so time will be when he clicks exit after completing the level. Just when he hits exit. And time. time. Very nice run. A couple of minor mistakes yeah. here and there, but for Ed's first time on the channel, doing very difficult levels in a VR setting, in an RTA setting, exceptional and underestimate as well. Very nice. Nice way to end off VR block for this marathon. Any thoughts? It was a really good run, in my opinion. Every, yep. Most of the stats were executed perfectly. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this. GG to Ed. Yeah, I like some of his clever uh, strats where like he's walking over the noisy floors and stuff. Um, yeah, so... Okay, so I was going to say thank you, Ed Boy. That was a great VR run. So the VR block comes to an end. But the marathon continues. As coming up next, we have uh, Resident Evil 2, excuse me, Mega Man Legends first, and then Resident Evil 2. So stick around for that. We'll go on a short intermission, 
get the new game set up and we will be right back. So stay tuned, everyone. <laughs> 